I've had the iPhone 15 Plus for around two weeks, and in this video, I want to give you my honest review of it. I, I kind of knew day one or two everything I wanted to say, but I haven't had time to cover it. Now, the iPhone 15 Plus retails at around $899, $929 with a carrier and goes up from there. It brings Dynamic Island, which is all new for the Plus models. Great on that front. We do have ourselves a USB-C right there, which is also pretty awesome. If you are looking for, you know, different charging standard, you don't want lightning no more. And then it has a matte textured rear. Um, looks quite good on this matte black color option. Um, other people, you know, tend to not or tend to prefer some lighter colors, but there's like an off white on the other lighter colors. So it depends if you like that or not. We have a dual camera here with a 48 megapixel lens in there. So that's going to be pretty nice. Very similar to the 14 Pro Max. And then a 6.7 inch 60 hertz ProMotion Super Retina XDR display that also gets just as bright as the 15 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max. So very decent specs here besides 60 hertz panel. We'll talk more about my thoughts about that later. So what are my thoughts on the design? Well, the thing with this phone is that I quite like the design and that's because they got rid of the smudgy glass back of the iPhone 14 Plus and they got a smoother matte textured rear. And on the sides, it's also quite smooth as well. That was also decent on the 14 Plus, but it just feels like a polished version of a Plus iPhone. And I just really like that. I think it's a really nice jump this year for the Plus model. Although the next Plus model will be even bigger of a jump. This is a solid, it feels great. It's very light. Um, the design, while similar to other iPhones, it just feels good. So I like it. I like, I think it's a really good option if you want a cheaper than a Max phone and you want a comfortable feel, you know, comfortable, lightweight for a big phone size. Now, if you go to the regular iPhone 15, that is very, very light, way lighter than this. But this is way lighter than the 15 Pro Max, which is supposed to be so much lighter than last year. I'm also really digging the matte black color option here. I think it looks great. And I think it's what was the last time you had this was like iPhone 7 Plus. It just looks excellent, especially if you're into, you know, matte black things. But you know, at the same time, if you're into more color, um, this is definitely a little bit dull. But if you like matte black things, this is going to be an awesome choice for you right here. I also wanted to mention that the build of this phone, it does feel a little bit like super light, like a little bit fragile, like I would want to put a case on it. So um, I'm not saying it's fragile. It will crack, though, if you drop it on the wrong angle. So this definitely still needs case protection, but it's still durable. It's still strong aluminum. You know, it's, it's decent, so it doesn't feel like no cheapy phone. And the front, you can definitely cover with a screen protector if you want. Uh, but the ceramic glass should be pretty durable for just day-to-day -day use, provided you don't drop it really hard on cement. Okay, so let me give you my thoughts on the display. So I could tell you right away that the display on this phone is really good. It's very bright. You have a high nit percentage, like 2,000 nits outdoors. And it's OLED, and it doesn't have super thick bezels. They are thinner on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but these are around the same panel as like the iPhone 14 Pro Max without the 120 hertz promotion. Now, this leads to pretty good battery life, but I still found my 15 Pro Max to last longer than this phone, but only by a little bit. It's almost identical. So this is one of the best battery life iPhones I've seen um, in terms of display, not really draining it too much. Also, because it's a 60 hertz, if you put it in the low power mode, you can use that a lot and you don't see a difference because in the 15 Pro Max, it drops it down to 60 hertz. But here it's already like that. So I found myself using that more with this display. You know, you don't really notice it after a couple days. I actually was been using this. You could see my Sims in there. I don't really notice it after a couple of days. I do think they should put it, though, because I don't like the price I'm paying without getting some top features that other phones at this price get. That's the reason I say that a lot. But honestly, I, you know, iOS is pretty smooth, even on 60 hertz. So I kind of forgot about it. I don't really think about it too much until I get back on a 90 hertz, 120 hertz display. And I'm like, OK, that's a little bit uh, slow looking, but the software really holds it together, you know. And then when it comes to Dynamic Island, if you don't like Dynamic Island, you're really going to dislike this phone because there is a big pill up there, but it's kind of useful. There's a lot of usages 
for that. Just like other big iPhones, though, I don't like how this one, you know, when you can't go on the landscape, when you turn it sideways, it's still a portrait only phone. I don't like this. This is ridiculous. Also, it should turn sideways. Also, there's no split screen on here. Big iPhone, zero split screen once again. So you're still not taking advantage of this size besides watching media larger and, you know, reading larger on a larger screen. Although if you want the larger screen, then you need that bigger space and that bigger battery. this is a great option. So the display for me on a scale of one to 10, it's like a 8.5 out of 10. I would give it like a 9.5 if it was, you know, like the 15 Pro Max, but it's, it's up there. It's very strong, even without the 120 Hertz. But if you really need that refresh rate, you're definitely going to really dislike this panel. But I find it to be basically identical to the iPhone 14 Pro Max display without 120 hertz. And that's the bottom line. They're almost the same display, just this one's smoother on the 14 Pro Max. That's really the major difference between the two. So talking software, we have 17.0.3 on board. This has the A16 Bionic, so the software should get updated for several years to come. For sure, very fast chipset in here. And there's, you know, I don't really have a ton to say about software. It's iOS, app library, grid of icons on the home screen. You can add some widgets here and there, depending on what you want to put on your phone. You know, what else is there to talk about? You can customize with certain things like the lock screen. You know, you have the built-in features, check-in safety features, you know, emergency SOS. You know, we have a control center up here. Everything works well with Apple. I mean, what else to say about software? It's simple. You know, it works. Dynamic Island enhances the software experience a little bit here, especially when, you know, using things that take advantage of it. Like, you'll see it do things like this. When you hit the ringer, you'll see it make different actions when you put on the flashlight. Should have showed up. I don't know why it's not showing up there. Maybe this one doesn't have it yet, but... It'll show, you know, different actions when you put on timers and you get Uber Eats rides, you get calls, it expands. I mean, it's cool. Like, it's a different software feature if you didn't want to go to a pro phone and you haven't had it before. But at the same time, you know, this is still basically iOS like you'll experience on any other iPhone. So it's simple, easy to use, and has a great ecosystem. There's not much more I have to say about it. It runs pretty flawlessly on this phone. No major bugs or lags I've been experiencing at all with 15 Plus. Now, when it comes to performance, this phone is an absolute rocket performer with the A16 Bionic. This is actually faster than some current launching I, uh, other phones on the market. So it's a really solid, strong phone. If you want that type of performance, you're going to get it here. And what's nice about this is that you know, you can have the same chip, the Dynamic Island, and you don't have to go get a 14 Pro Max if you wanted more of a lighter iPhone, you wanted a Plus model. You don't have to go get last year's phone. You could just buy the 15 Plus. So A16 Bionic ensures great performance long term. One thing, though, is this only has 6 gigs of RAM. The 15 Pro Max has 8 gigs of RAM. However, that doesn't matter whatsoever because the 8 gigs of RAM is barely even noticed. You'll almost never really use it, maybe four or five years down the line, but you'll probably upgrade before then. If you don't, it might feel slightly slower in the future, but I don't think it's going to affect it too much just because of the way Apple you know, makes iOS for iPhones. They don't really put too much heavy things on it that really would need so much, so much RAM for day to day. So let's talk about the cameras here. We do have one 48 megapixel camera on here, and then we do have a second 12 megapixel camera. So... They essentially just up the main sensor to be essentially the same as the one on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, making this a pretty good deal uh, because you're getting last year's premium sensor for not the same price as last year. Also, if you go into camera settings, you go into formats, you'll see you can shoot at 24 megapixel now. And then if we go down here, you'll see we have these different options here, photographic styles, but it doesn't look like you have the ProRes stuff you'll find on the more premium phone. Now let's talk about this zoom. You can crop in on that 48 megapixel. You can see it goes two times zoom now. And that's a pretty sharp photo at the two times. I found though, after you get at past two times, all the way up to 10, not very sharp, but at least you can zoom 10 times. It's not gonna be the sharpest photos out there, but you can do it. In video, action modes, 4K, 60, recording, flawless as always. You know, you're gonna have great autofocus on there cinematic video 
And you get those same portrait features where if you take a photo, you can see right here the little focal point icon, f-stops. And you can see that you can go into the edit mode. Hold on. And then you can see right here, you can change f-stops after the fact. Uh, portrait mode right there, portrait off. It's pretty cool. I mean, you have the feature set. Front facing camera is solid. Portrait is solid. Everything about this camera is solid. You just don't have the best zoom. And that's that's it. And other than that, if you don't need to zoom and you just want a little bit more zoom than you used to have, this is a decent deal. Because I like that they have two times and ten times now. It's at least matching like older iPhones that always had ten times zoom. So go ahead and check out some of my samples and let me know your thoughts on the camera. So here's a test with the iPhone 15 Plus. You can see this is how it looks walking. It is a cloudy day. So probably not the absolute best it can perform, but definitely yeah, it's pretty good, I would say. What do you guys think? So the battery life on this phone is very good. It lasts all day long, you know, about 12 hours. It depends. That's not screen time. That's like all day uh, usage off the charger. Screen time, I've been finding, you know, pretty solid. It compares closely to my iPhone 15 Pro Max, only getting about an hour less. The phone lasts me all day, and I don't have anything close to being worried by the end of the day. If As long as I charge it up, I'm good to go. So... Long battery life, much longer than the smaller Pro and much longer than the regular 15. So this is a great battery life iPhone option if you really want that. Um, and USB-C charging, while not the fastest, should protect your battery compared to some of these faster chargers out here that will hurt battery health in the long term. So I'm not too mad that Apple doesn't have the strongest fast charging, but it doesn't have that if you're looking for super quick charging. So battery life on the whole, very big thumbs up here. This is the one of the 15 models you want if you want a battery life deal. Like you want cheaper price, you want great battery life, this is the one. Apple fixed this a couple years ago, but the call quality, connectivity, these are good phones. They don't have terrible reception and they make solid phone calls. Also, audio was very loud on this phone, although I didn't find it as uh, bassy or crisp as the 15 Pro Max, it's still very loud and it's very solid. So no issues with the audio loudness, nothing like that. This also doesn't have Wi-Fi 7, but it has some of the latest Wi-Fi 6 standards, 5.3 Bluetooth, so it's very fast to connect. Again, the emergency SOS features are on board. So it's got plenty going for it here on the iPhone 15 Plus. So Face ID really hasn't changed much. And we this phone comes in black, blue, green, yellow, and pink. A 4383 milliamp hour battery, dual camera, matte black. You have multiple you know, ways to buy this in different storage capacities and sizes. Um, so it's a solid option. In conclusion, I really like the iPhone 15 Plus. I like it much more than the iPhone 14 Plus just because it has a better 48 megapixel camera, 
you know, this one just felt like a 13. This one feels like there's actually some true upgrades here. This just felt like they just brought a big iPhone and replaced the mini. Whereas the 15 plus this year seems like a solid second tier option. So it's like the base model of an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Overall, it's a solid iPhone. I definitely recommend it if you find that most of these features are going to be enough for you. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know your thoughts on the 15 plus. Are you going to pick it up? Are you going to skip it out or not? I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. Peace.